Meet you at the end. Meet you at the end. Hey everybody, my name is Vinny LaSorsa. We're gonna give you guys a walkthrough of the 42 Last Mango. It's a Freeman Hull, the Merritt House, Pipe Welders Tower, Yamaha Outboards, Garmin Electronics. We'll start at the stern, go to the bow. We have quad Yamaha 300 Outboards with the Yamaha Hellmaster system. Uh, we chose to go with Yamaha Power because uh, for us, we thought it was the most reliable option. Uh, the Yamaha Hellmaster, uh, the joystick control that some of you might have seen, uh, it's really an uh, awesome way to be able to dock in really tight situations if you don't have a bow thruster and you have like a heavy cross crosswind or cross current. Um, just any tight situation, once you get used to using the joystick, it, it, really, uh, it really changes how you feel in, in terms of your confidence. Uh, the Hellmaster system also has spot lock feature, so if you're on top of a rack and you're fishing, you can spot lock, the, you can spot lock and it'll hold you right there. You can, uh, you can set a drift so you can keep your bow in a certain direction you want while you're drifting. Uh, you can also change how many rotations your steering wheel is from center to port and center to starboard. Um, when you, you know when you're when you're going into a turn, you can do you can do three, you can do five turns to fully to starboard, fully to board. Just a lot of neat features that the uh, Hellmaster has. Freemans all have a partition uh, transit bait well. Our bait well, we decided uh, when Freeman was building the hull that we were going to change the liner and just do one big solid bait well. We chose to go with this one solid uh, bait well so we could also double it as a fish box. We didn't go with an acrylic lid, so we didn't magnify the sunlight UV going through and heat up all the ice that we might have on the fish box. So our bait well is not only a bait well, it's fully insulated, and it's also, we aerated it as well, so you know we could, we could keep bait in the bait well without having circulating water come from the pump. It just use its own water circulating with an aerator for a little bit in case maybe you're running through a spot that the water's real has low salinity or you might run through a freshwater spot if you got bait in the bait well we can shut it all down and use the existing water in here and aerate it. We did a custom color inside our fish box live well here. We did seafoam green uh, just so it matched the hull. Um, and on each side of the bait well port and starboard we have these little storage compartments. On the starboard side, we keep all our cleaning supplies. You'll see everything from mitts, soap, chamois, magic erasers, uh, just stuff that we quickly grab to clean. On the port side, that's where we use for, it's our tackle center, quick, our quick tackle center. So say we're kite fishing for sailfish. In that little tackle center, we'll have everything from the hookers, pliers, bait knife, uh, release knife, and little Plano bins with the hooks, the leads, the swivels we're using that day, a couple spare spools a liter that we're using for that, whatever fishing we're doing. Sometimes we keep a couple different things in there, like we know we might switch it up and, and go, you know, yellowtail and after we're kite fishing, uh, we'll have like the yellowtail jigs and the light leader uh, set up in there. And then moving forward, we have bilge access port and starboard. And our bilge access, you're gonna see we each side we have sea chests and our sea chests are pumped by hooker pumps. Um, the hooker pumps that we chose to go with were the 4500s for our bait wells because we have three bait wells on this boat. We have the transom and then we have two index. Redundancy is why we have two because we can, with the 4500 hooker pump, it's got uh, the adjustable speed. One hooker pump can, can, can run all three bait wells, but we have a redundant system just, just in case, you know, if something happens, we need, we need to have a backup pump. We also, through these sea chests, we have our air conditioning and refrigeration plumbed off of. The AC and refrigeration is plumbed with a 2500 hooker pump that's a variable speed. And we set the speed based on the water needs of the compressor to cool down the refrigeration or the air conditioning. All right, so moving forward from the in-deck bait wells, we have two side dive doors, port and starboard dive doors that both come, they both turn in when we open them. Both of these dive doors were custom made out of carbon fiber by Marin Boat Works. The neat thing about both of these doors is we decided to make good use of the doors and we made little storage compartments at the base of each door. And we chose to have both doors um, turn in. This way, if you're at a floating dock and the floating dock might be higher, 
than, than your door. You can still open the door in. People can step in and out. And you can really tie up tight. You can put a small fender up, tie up tight to that floating dock and people don't have a big gap to step over. The reason we have dive doors on both sides is because if we if it's you know a better docking situation to be on the lay up on the port side or lay up on the starboard side. We have a door on either side. Also we do a lot of giant tuna fishing. Um, it's just nice to be able to have the option of opening you know a door instead of trying to drag the fish around the other side. Uh, for us, it, suit, it suited our needs very well to have a door on both sides. Mare Boatworks made a completely custom stainless latching mechanism for these doors, which is really impressive and it will, it's also very heavy duty just in case you're also in a docking situation and you are forced to or accidentally laid up on a piling on that door. The locking mechanism is so, so stout that it wouldn't cause the pin, the locking pin, to, to bang or break. Going forward from there, we'll talk about the house. Inside this house, starboard side, it's all storage. Um, and in the center of our starboard bench seat, we have a table that's on a gas shop. So you could raise up this table and it's a great spot to eat or there's a lot of work to be done um, by Mr. Buffett. So he decides sometimes to, you know, to, to catch up on some work while we're waiting for a bite or on the ride out, the ride in. Um, we we'll it up in a beautiful spot. Sometimes he, you know, he does his writing, sits there. It's a great spot, we'll show you. On the port side, we, that's where uh, the aft port side, we keep all our safety gear. Um, it's like our, we have a D-Day medical kit. It's got everything from an AED to oxygen to a med kit, a prescription med kit. Uh, we have our uh, two uh, chests for refrigeration or freezer. We can turn them both into freezers. We can turn them both into refrigerators. Um, and then just forward of the bench seats, you got your, your passenger and your driver's seats. And underneath the passenger seat on the port side, we have a custom footrest made out of stainless that Merritt's made, and it's because we have shock absorbing seats on the port, uh, port starboard side, passenger and driver seats are shock absorbing. They're LeBrock seats with shock wave shock absorbers. The person sitting in the port side couldn't really figure out a good way to give them a footrest, especially when they're running long distances. So Merritt's made us a custom footrest that comes out and slides out, which is really neat. The driver's got a footrest built into the into the helm. Uh, the inside of the whole cabin, uh, the top side of the whole cabin, it was faux painted by artist uh, Monique Richter. It, it's a carbon fiber house and, it, and uh, many people think it's teak because it looks like almost a real thing. Monique did a great job doing that. The top side, the hard top, the top side of the hard top, we chose to go with a flat whisper gray. We did that to cut down on glare uh, while we're inside the cabin and you can highlight that. Barrett's guys did a great job painting that. The, the lighting inside the cabin, and actually the whole boat, is, is Lumatech lighting. Um, we, it's all dimmable, it's all LED. Um, a lot of it's multicolored. You can custom pick any colors. You know, like you wanted to change your hard top, the very top, you can do red, white, and blue going down. You can turn it all to sea foam. You can turn it all red so you don't lose your night vision. All right, and then the helm area, we have all Garmin electronics. We have lower helm we have two 8617s and we got a Garmin autopilot and we have the Garmin Empire Bus digital switching system. Uh, we can do all our switching from the screen themselves but we also have the Garmin Empire Bus uh, rubberized switches just so it's redundant and it's quick if, like, you know, if you have your depth sounder up and the chart on the other side or radar on the other side you also have buttons you can manually push instead of going to the screen. We have the Yamaha CL7 gauge. We got two external speakers for our VHF, so if you're in a loud situation or the music's up, you can turn up your VHF in case somebody needs to call you or you're talking to somebody on the radio. We have Garmin Autopilot, Garmin VHFs. We've got a Fusion head unit up there. And then we have a Garmin TD50, which is a small little five inch display that we can just keep the switching on or we can keep our clear camera up. We can, we can put anything we want on it, but really what I keep on it a lot is just main switches I might need to touch quickly, which would be like horn, spotlight, wipers, things you'd have to get to pretty quick and keep up there. Um, we also have air conditioning inside the cabin. It's a Dometic you know, air conditioning, which is actually 110 powered, which we have this boat set up with no generator. We have lithium battery banks, which are charged by the outboards. And the outboards keep the battery banks charged. We have two, two different battery banks that can, that can be charged while we're using while we're using one side, say if we're using the starboard house one, port house can be charged in full by the engines and we can run down one side and charge the other. All right, and then inside the cabin, uh, there's a queen size uh, berth, queen size bed, just a single bed in there. Uh, right when you go in on the port side, we have our whole breaker panel, electrical panel, 
got one 12 and 12 volt. Uh, there's a closet, there's a uh, freshwater head, freshwater sink, microwave, uh, like medicine cabinet, some storage in there. Um, underneath the bed uh, is our freshwater tank, so it was dead center in the hull, low center of gravity on the, on the freshwater tank. Above the bed inside, there's an oversized hatch. Not only to let light in, but just God forbid there was a problem, it's a quick, easy way out. Our exits are always good. Um, the inside was all finished finished by Merits. It's got really neat Lumitech lighting. It's all dimmable. Um, also, the inside is air conditioned, just like the whole helm area. All right, going forward around the walk around, port and starboard side, um, there's access hatches. Just forward of the fuel tanks on both port and starboard side, we have house bank one, house bank two, which are battery banks. Just forward of them, we have storage, and there's an immense amount of storage in both of those hatches. Um, and then just forward of the stored hatch, storage hatches on the port and starboard uh, bow deck, uh, we have two uh, 500 quart fish boxes. Again, they're insulated. They can be used as storage or fish boxes, ice holds. And then forward, we have two anchor lockers. And our anchor lockers, uh, we have a partition port side. We have a fortress Danforth style anchor. Starboard side, we have a big heavy stainless plow. We have 400 feet of anchor road on both sides. Um, in the center of the partition is where we keep all of our dock lines. Um, we have our dock lines separated by 35 foot, 45 foot. Um, and we our custom anchor locker, which we'll show you, we had fiberglass tubes made so our anchors just slide in nice and easy. Underneath every deck hatch and anchor locker, we have uh, decket material underneath the deck hatches. So when you close the deck hatches, the gaskets sit real tight and nice on the decket uh, material, which is which is basically a foamy material. On the starboard side and on the port side forward, uh, that's where we keep all of our uh, safety gear in terms of life jackets and our EPIRB and our, um, our throwable. Um, we have them basically put away with a breathable mesh material that's just got buttons. So you could quickly grab it, rip the buttons down, and all your life jackets would just dump out on deck and you can pass them out to everybody. Uh, quick, easy access uh, for the safety gear. On the starboard side, we have custom gaff storage, which is just made out of starboard material. And just quick, easy gaff access, you know, be, you know multiple different size gaffs and hooks for us. We also have our harpoons and pole spears um, hidden up underneath uh, underneath the decks, uh, all put together. This way we can grab them quickly when we're fishing. The sound system in the boat, it's got a fusion head unit, which talks nicely uh, with all the Garmin equipment. You know, as fusion is owned by Garmin, they, they, they're very compatible. All the speakers are JL Audio speakers. We have JL Audio speakers, amps, subs, all throughout the boat. Right above the hard top here, we have a sure shade. And the sure shade goes out on two motors on telescoping stainless rods. And the sure shade will come all the way back out to the bait well. And it covers the majority of the cockpit. It's a nice feature if you're sitting up anchored or even if you know if you're bottom fishing, you can you can put out that shade and kind of back up underneath the shade. Not worry about if somebody wants to set the hook real hard, they're not going to hit the top of the sunshade because it's only in, it's inset just as wide as the house. The whole tower was made by pipe welders um, here in Fort Lauderdale. The platform, the console, the sunshade is all carbon fiber. They're extremely light. The console only weighed 22 pounds. The uh, sunshade up top weighed 20 pounds. The custom matte finished flat Whisper Gray that we have up in the tower uh, cuts down on the glare um, and absorbs the light. That's pretty much the same thing as the, as the flat black does. Um, for us, we just we thought it looked a little nicer and it kind of is hidden up there. Uh, the top of our console um, and the tower is all flat Whisper Gray as well, just as well as the lower as the lower helm is all flat Whisper Gray, just to just to reduce glare. Um, it's really easy on your eyes. Um, up, up top, we have a Yamaha Hellmaster joystick. We have a Garmin 8612. We got Empire bus switches. We got a binnacle for, you know, throttles for the Yamaha. Um, cup holders. And we have storage in a VHF up there. What was a nice thing also that pipe holders did for us on the platform, the platforms where you stand when you're in the tower, just forward to your feet. We did a storage compartment, which is also a wire run junction box for everything that's up in our tower coming down from the lower helm, but it's also storage. So 
say for example, uh, you know, we run up there and the cover is still on on the on the upper station controls. You could take the covers off and you could store them right there without having to go up and down the ladder without putting your your covers away or the covers to your electronics. You might hide an extra bottle of water up there. You could hide binoculars. Um, you know, anything you really need up there, you can you can kind of store up there for the time being. Um, it was just a nice little storage box to be able to have stuff there so you don't have to go up and down the tower so much. On top of the hard top, you'll notice we got a four foot open array, 12 kW Garmin radar. Forward of that, we have a Garmin 40 watt Phantom Dome, the 24 inch dome. We went with redundant radars because we fish up north so much in the fog. It's nice to have a redundant radar just in case there was an issue. But the radars are both good for different things. The, the Doppler technology and the motion scope with the Phantom technology and we have a four foot open array 12 kW that can really reach out. Um, we use both for different applications. Um, that's why a lot of people ask, why do you have two radars? We have two radars because we run in the fog so often. Underneath the platform, you'll notice that we have four Lumitech razor lights. The razor light floodlights, they're dimmable. If they're turned all the way up, they're extremely bright. I honestly, we keep them pretty much on the low settings a lot when we're fishing or we're doing boat watches. But if you had to turn it up and get it, you know, make it daylight out, those Lumitech uh, razor lights get extremely bright. We got four of them, uh, Ford Starboard Bow Stern. Up underneath the tunnel as well, inside the hull, we have a seafoam green painted razor light. That's a spotlight. It's not the, it's not the flood option. That's also dimmable, but if we're running and you don't want to lose your night vision, um, you know, we have a rigid industries light up in the forward part of our console. You don't want that rigid industry light I use more in docking situations, maybe entering a marina or harbor you might not be familiar with, uh, or maybe looking for, you know, anything, you know, buoys, crab pots, floats that might be in the water if you're at a low speed. At a high, if I'm running at a, high, a higher speed at night, I put on that tunnel light because it doesn't illuminate the whole bow. It just illuminates the water. You can see the sea condition. You can hit reflectors on channel markers. You can hit reflectors that might be on any high flying, high flyer gear, any sort of lobster crab gear. Um, so that's why we have the tunnel light and also the rigid light, uh, rigid industries, big floodlight up top. All the hardware you see on the boat, latches, hinges, rod holders, cup holders, it's all Gemlux, um, Gemlux stainless steel. We got 58 rod holders going around the boat. A lot of people ask us, why do you have so many rod holders? We do a lot of live bait fishing and you know we fly two, three kites at a time. Um, we actually do use a lot of these rod holders. We don't use all of them at once, but we use them all for different things. Um, when you're fighting a giant tuna and it's moving around the boat, we have a lot of zero degree rod holders for a bent butt that we move all around the boat. We fight, we fight most of the giant blue fins out of the bow on a zero degree. Um, it's just the spot that we, just suits us the best. All right, we're going to walk you through some parts of the boat. We're going to walk you through the tackle center, the bilge access, bilge area, port and starboard bench seats, the helm area. We're going to walk you through those areas because they're unique to this boat and we kind of have some neat tricks in there that you might think are interesting so come on we're walking through now so this is the tackle area we use this area when we're fishing um, we keep you know tools that are necessary in there such as pliers and things like that um, we've got some d hookers and some line releases here we have these magnets up here that are are pretty good for everything you know we stick anything metal to it so you don't lose it or lose track of it have people step on stuff. So this is my little tackle center. This is JJ's corner. Now we're gonna take you over to the bilge and show you some of the custom work in there. So in here we have custom lead boxes. Carry all the different leads we might need while we're fishing. On top of them we have custom, custom holders for all of our cleaning supplies. Um, in here we have a custom fillet table that fits into the rod holders in the boat. We can use that while we're fishing, whether it be to cut bait or just to have stuff ready for, for fishing to hook onto hooks and stuff like that. So we have this fillet table custom made, fits into our bilge, goes right into rod holders where we need it. And now we're gonna have Vinny show you the helm area. All right, so now we'll walk you through the inside of the cabin. You can see the detail in the faux painting for the teak. You can see all the intricacy of the grain. This is the matte flat finish whisper gray <clears throat> that I told you about. You can see there's no glare. 
well, inside the cabin. We have some little decket, nice little detail inside the cup holders, laser engraved shark fins. We have dual windshield wipers that are in sync. You can get to the motor. Gotta pop out that Yamaha display to get to that motor, but then we keep things like in these little dry bags up here. You got like little mini flashlight, headlamp, phone chargers, stuff like that. Up in there. And then we have two external Garmin speakers with volume knobs. This is that new Garmin TD50. It just has the it has select switching that I that I like up on here. That's like uh, which your wipers, your horn, things like that. Things I want to get too quick. Fusion head unit, the Fusion Apollo. And then right here we have this little custom panel made. Both forward bilges, both aft bilges. If I turn them on, you'll see them kind of light up real quick. If, if they need power, they light up. Just so while I'm running, while we're running, we know if the, uh, if the bilges are coming on. Compass, two Garmin 8617s. Uh, Garmin uh, autopilot, little repeater with some information. Yamaha Master. We took a Garmin data card reader and custom put in USB chargers in it. Then we have two cup holders. This is the rubberized Empire bus switching. Both port and starboard windows go up and down on electric tab ramps. dual VHFs and then here is the the custom the custom footrest for who's ever in the seat comes out and turns we have a nice little footrest while we're in here at the helm I can just show you we had this little we got a paper towel holder under here flashlights Couple of quick access tools, air horn, fire extinguishers, extra coasters, just some quick stuff to grab. Binoculars. Uh, yeah, another neat feature with having all Garmin equipment is that <clears throat> we have a Garmin. I, we all wear the Garmin Quadix watches. We can control the bearing on the autopilot from the watch. So if you are fishing with like a limited crew, maybe there's just two people on board, and you're trolling and you're in a, you know you're in a big safe open area offshore. You can control the, the, the bearing. You can control it by a degree, up to 10 degrees, and just make a, a slight turn from your autopilot. Or if you see up ahead that you want to keep following the weed line, you can keep changing the tack on your watch. Um, the other thing is you can bring up data, boat data, onto your watch. So you can bring up the, the speed you're going, you can bring up the water temp, you can bring up the heading you're on, any of, those, any of that kind of information you can see right from your watch. You can also control the fusion head unit. Um, and change, you know, fast forward the, to a different song or change the volume all from your watch. And so with the Empire Bus digital switching system, we can control any switch in the whole boat from this system. For example, like right here, if we go to, we go to um, our pumps, or, eight, or we could go change our bait well pumps, we can slide, like if I turn on the hooker pump, I can slide this bar across to control the speed of the hooker pump that we want it to go. Freshwater tank is just about full port and starboard fish box drains. Um, if I go to the main page and if I want to turn on, say for example, if I, you can see the outline of the boat here, if I turn on the lights, you see how it shows the lights are on? Um, if I turn on the, the nav lights, you see how it shows red and the green that the nav lights are on? The image will change based on, on what switch I have on. Control the inverter system. I can see right now we got the starboard side inverter on. Um, you know, it's, it's making power, or 110 power. I can control the air conditioner. And from the Active Captain app on my phone, I can tap into the Garmin Empire Bus digital switching system from my phone. And say if I'm on the way to the boat at night, I can turn on lights before I get there. Or if I leave and I forgot that I didn't turn off a certain light, I can shut the lights off from my phone. It's called the Garmin On Deck system. It's, it's really neat. Um, it's all through active, the Active Garmin Active Captain app on your phone. The way this whole entire helm is laid out was just for the sole purpose of being efficient 
and being able to control the whole boat from one spot, and being able to do so efficiently and quickly. Um, that's why even some of the hard um, Empire bus switches I put up here, the way they're laid out, top left corner is horn, the bottom left corner is tunnel light, then I got nav lights and spotlight. But I chose to do the horn and the tunnel light for safety because now if I'm driving or anybody's driving, and once you know where the switches are, you, you know, you hit your hand here, the top left corner's horn, and you can hit the horn. Me, you know, me, 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 you know, you can hit the horn and you know exactly where it is. You can do it without looking because you know where the button is. So there's a lot of things were done for efficiency, safety in mind. This whole boat is really designed very, very well thought out. Um, a lot of people had, had a lot of input in this. Um, original vision from Mr. Buffett to the guys at Garmin putting in their input. Um, all the guys at Merritt's putting in their input. Um, I mean, a lot. there's a lot of input in here with collectively thousands and thousands of hours on the water between all the mines that got behind this. So you can see how efficient, clean, and well thought out everything is. All right, so inside the helm area, this is the port bench seat. It's partitioned into three. Storage, fridge or freezer, fridge or freezer. Our fridge and freezers are powered by uh, 12 volt compressors. All right, so here is primarily our safety equipment. Uh, we keep th this little bag that we got in here. It's like, it's all of our electrical stuff. Like it's like 50 amp to 30 amp conversion kit. Um, just different electrical needs that we might have that we might need quickly when we're going to different docks. We got D-Day um, first aid medical kits broken into two kits. One kit, it's got oxygen, AED, prescription med kit, uh, burn kit, uh, bleeding control. And then this, this red bag here is a six person Switlick life raft that we can grab out of here pretty pretty quickly. And th this right now is being used as a drink box, drink freezer. We're not using this one right now, so it's off, but this one could be a fridge or a freezer as well. It could be a chest freezer, fridge. The deck of the whole helm area. This is the only real wood in the whole boat. So on the starboard bench seat, it's just where we use those Yeti gear boxes and Plano bins to keep all our tackle organized. Um, this is just like a quick, quick grab tackle tray, but in here it's all like fishery specific organized. Um, got your release gloves. That's what we have in the back of the starboard bench seat. Forward starboard bench seat flips up. It's just a couple custom life jackets. We got a couple of Yeti gear boxes. That's where we keep a few extra drinks. Got the land shark. And this is cool. This is something Merritt's custom custom built for us. Now here. JJ, give me a sandwich. Merritt's built a ton of gas shock. Um, you can sit here. You know, the, you grab your iPad, your laptop, eat a sandwich, whatever whatever you want to do, and be at a pretty beautiful spot doing it. All right, this is that tray I was telling you about where you could throw flip flops, shoes, release gloves, anything quick you got to get off deck, you could kind of throw it in here, kind of drain here in the back. But here's the really awesome mechanism that Merritt's made for us for our doors. And you can see this pin, the way it comes in and out. So now we're gonna show you the anchor locker. It's got two accesses to it. Starboard side is where we keep the Danforth anchor, which we're sitting on right now. Keep a spare hose in there. Port side, we keep our plow anchor laid in there nicely and then right in the center I keep my dock lines all laid out. We have 35 and 45 foot dock lines in there. All right now on the, on the on top of the cabin here uh, we got padded cushions. If you're entertaining going for a cruise out trolling it's a good place for you know people to lay out. And, um, this is all faux painted this keeper. My money as well it's not real cheap. But. Going into the cabin you can lock the salon door open so it doesn't rattle if you're drifting. Lower the lid. This is the electronics panel. 
got our lights for our interior lights. So one of the most often questions that we get is, why did you go with the Yamaha 300s and not the Yamaha 350? We chose to go with the 300s because uh, they're, they, they're just, in our opinion, um, the most reliable power option that, that Yamaha puts out. They're so much lighter than the 350. And for the extra 200 horsepower versus the weight, um, we chose to go with 300s because we figured we'd pretty much have the same cruising speed. You might get a little bit on the top end, but we're not running the top end all the time. So for example, with these Yamaha 300s, we cruise at 3,900 RPMs, doing 40 miles an hour, burning somewhere around 0.7. That really depends on how the boat's loaded out, how much ice, how much fuel, but right around 0.7. Um, if I slow it down to 35 miles an hour, we're getting 0 0.85, 0 0.8. Um, we could cruise at 4,500 RPMs and be doing 50 miles an hour. So the speed and efficiency of these Freeman hulls is very remarkable. And those performance numbers might sound different from what you're hearing of other Freeman, you know, boat owners or other Freeman boats that you might see on social media, the internet. Got to keep in mind, we have a gap tower, we got a house, and we travel far. We run and fish the canyons. We run, we run far. We fish the Bahamas. We're always we're always fishing pretty heavy. Heavy meaning ice, and fuel, and gear, and people. And we're usually loaded up with a few different types of fishery equipment at a time because we might switch it up. You know, we might, you know, we might be high speed wahoo trolling, and after that, we might go try to catch some yellow tails and nuts. So, um, we're a little heavier than the average freeman. So those performance numbers are, are not indicative of every freeman, but they're indicative of this freeman. Another question we get asked a lot is, what do you guys do most? What do you fish for most? Uh, to be honest with you, like Mr. Buffett refers to this boat as the all-purpose boat. We literally do everything on this boat, from high-speed wahoo trolling to catching yellowtails, kite fishing for sailfish, um, <laughs> running, you know, far distances to go to like a remote flat and loading up the paddle boards, putting the paddle boards in the mana racks and the rod holders, and deploying the paddle boards from this boat anchored out on a, fl on a really remote flat and letting letting the guys guess Mr. Buffett go bone fishing from paddle boards. Um, it really does everything well. Um, you know, we, like I said, everything from giant bluefin fishing to being like a mothership with paddle boards to run up on a flat and then the boat doesn't draw anything, draws two feet. So we can get real skinny with it and, and deploy everybody on paddle boards, let them go off on their way, um, come back to us, eat lunch, go back out, do it again. The boat does everything well. And like I said, Mr. Buffett refers to it as the all-purpose boat because we can it's set up to literally do everything well, um, and um, it really does do that. All right, we really hope everybody enjoyed the walkthrough. We know a lot of people have been asking, you know, hey, will you guys do a walkthrough? Um, we fully appreciate um, what an awesome collaboration this was between Freeman and Merritt, and you know uh, how Garmin helped us set up everything. Pipe welders nailed the tower, well, um, so we know it was it was something that everybody wanted to see and see more of. So we hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. Um, you know, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for the support, and uh, see the good side always. <laughs>